Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here. Today's video is gonna be a fun one. I'm going to tell you all about every single one of my five star reads since I started reading again back in 2020. So it's been about three years. I have 15 books to share with you today. Hopefully I'm gonna remember what they all were about. Bear with me if I forget, but I'll give you like my main takeaways of every book and like why specifically it was a five star read for me and why I think you should read it too. Um, so I'm kind of doing it in chronological order. I'm going to start with the ones that I read like way back in 2020 um, and then we'll just keep getting closer and closer to mo my most recent five star reads. So let's get into it. So I don't know how I'd have just determined this, but it's almost like there's two separate eras of my reading. Actually, that's a lie. I do know. There was like a little break. I think it was like 2021 that I kind of stopped reading for like probably six to eight months. It was definitely like a reading slump. So these four books that I'm going to start with are from kind of like that first initial era books that I read um, in the very beginning in 2020 when we were all in uh, quarantine. So the first book that I read um, was Where the Crawdads Sing. This obviously is a super popular book. If you've never heard of this book, you definitely are living under a rock. Um, this is a movie now, which I still have not watched the movie, which I really need to watch it. I actually think I'm gonna watch it with one of my best friends in a few weeks, so. This is just such an incredible book. It has such depth of characters. It is a literary fiction, but it has um, an element of a romance in it. It also has mystery in it. So it's just really intriguing. This book is good for honestly anybody, um, any kind of like age or type of book person would like this book. And so if you've never read this book, you really should read it. I do remember it took a little bit to get into, like get through the first 40%. Um, and then you'll just like be hooked. Um, but this is such a good like coming of age novel, some subplots of romance, subplots of mystery. And I definitely like did not, I remember, I did not guess the mystery or like the twist. Um, there's actually a few twists in this book. So highly recommend if you've never read Where the Crowd Had Sing. One of the next ones I think maybe was after this one is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I've been wanting to reread this for so long because I just remember reading this and just being like completely like enraptured by the writing and the storyline. This is about two sisters, identical twin sisters. Um, and one of them, they, so they're both um, African-American and one passes living their whole life as a white woman and the other one lives her life as like a true african-american woman and so it's just like their split journeys of like how they perceive the world and how they are perceived in the world and then they kind of come back together in this like key part of their life and kind of rekindle their their sisterhood and their friendship because they like basically fall out of out of talking and they don't talk to each other um and so it just is incredible i remember absolutely loving it and i really really need to get on and reread this book if I could wipe my memory of this book and read it again for the first time, I would like do anything for that. This book is absolutely incredible. The character development and how you're following the characters and like the kind of twisted weird things that happen are just like mesmerizing. I just remember reading this and it was just like I was so obsessed and I wish I could read it again for the first time. Honestly, now that it's been a while since I've read it, I probably could read it and forget like most of what actually happened. So it would probably feel like I was reading it for the first time again. Um, but this is a dark academia, so I would highly recommend reading this like in the fall time when you want those like fall dark academia vibes. It takes place on a college campus. It's about like five different friends and how they just like all interact. Dual POVs or no, it was just I just reread the back and I'm like, I want to read it right now. You start out the first page, you read like the big twist, like someone has just died. You read that on like the first page and then the whole book. And but then that same character is like in the first chapter. And so you like know what happened. Not like, it's not like a spoiler where you don't, you get like bored of reading it. You like want to read to find out what happened and how this thing happened that the author told you about on the first page. It just, please read this. It's so good. Last book in like that first era of reading is Redeeming Love by 
Francine Rivers. This was when I was really craving like a good romance that just like wasn't spicy and had some like Christian undertones in it. And this was such an amazing book. It deals with really heavy topics. It deals with like child pro prostitution. She grows up and she is still a prostitute. And so it's pretty heavy. It's not like it's light or airy at all, but it is so amazing to see the development of the main character. Um, her name is Angel and she meets this guy who is like super just on fire for the Lord. And this also takes place in 1850. So it's a little bit older. Usually I do not go for those kinds of books, like, but this was so well done, so fascinating and intriguing. If you're needing a romance that has so much more depth and body to it, I would totally recommend picking this up. You for sure do not have to be um, like religious or Christian, but this definitely talks about God a lot. So if you are religious or Christian and you want a story that's like super good and not cheesy, but like talks about God and, and watches people develop a relationship with God, this is such, such, such a good book. Highly recommend. Okay, now on to the books that I've read a little bit more recently, probably in the past like year or two. Where do I want to start? Oh my gosh, there's so many good books. Ah! This is a little bit from that first era. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This was such an amazing book. This is like a family drama. It follows like two different families and we watch how they like interconnect and interact with each other and it like explores their identity and motherhood. I don't quite remember the exact plot of it, but it is such a good read if you want like a literary fiction. Again, this isn't like a specific uh, genre. It definitely has subplots of romance if I remember, uh, but it is such a good exploration of like family dynamics. Um, really, really, really good. Next up, I'm really surprised that I gave this book a five star, but it is the Spanish Love Deception. I remember hearing about this so much. It was really popular a year or so ago. Yeah, I read this when I was flying to my honeymoon back in the beginning of January. I just loved these two together. They have to like fake date and he has to travel with her over to Spain where there's like a family member getting married. And I just like loved the fake dating trope in this book. Uh, it was really well done and I just loved it. This is really good if you are flying somewhere or you're going on vacation if you want kind of like the flight vacation vibes because that's what they're doing in this book. They're flying and vacationing. I'm such a big mood reader so I like to like match my book to the vibe I'm around. I probably wouldn't have liked this book as much if I wasn't reading it on a plane and on vacation. Um, I'm a really big believer that the environment that you're in and like the mental state that you're in affects how you view and experience books. So this definitely might have not been a five star read if it wasn't for me being on vacation, but nonetheless, I loved it and I think you should read it. So I read this book last summer. It is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is the same author that um, writes Meet Me at the Lake, which is like her newest release. It's like that pink cover. This book is dual timeline and it is very like on the lake vibes. Um, it's child, is it childhood? Yeah, it's childhood friends to lovers and it deals with some also heavy topics that's what i really loved about it i was going into it thinking it was going to be just like a light fluffy lake romance but it deals with like death and figuring out you know your identity and what you want to do in the world and so this was a really good read definitely again a really good mood read if you're going to like a lake or a beach definitely has the summer vibes in it what should i talk about next this is just so fun because i love all these books so much okay so I absolutely loved, like I almost want to shed a tear how much I love these, A Court of Mist and Fury, the second book in the Akatar series, and then A Court of Wings and Ruin, the third book. <sighs> this is a five star series for me. And honestly, if I reread the first book, which is obviously A Court of Thorns and Roses, I might bump it up to a five star. I gave it a four star. And then the last book, A Court of Silver Flames, I gave I think like a 4.5 star so like it's up there it just didn't give me the same feeling as these two books gave me I absolutely loved these books with all my heart this book is so amazing because Feyre the main character has literally the biggest like character development I think in this book she starts off with like one high lord and then like goes with another high lord and experiences their world and basically meets like her new family and i'm not gonna say anymore because we don't want to spoil anything because it is like a second book in a series but this oh my gosh is so 
so amazing and then the main thing i loved about this book i literally you can ask any of my family members i was reading this over I think like thanksgiving time in november and i was like addicted to reading this i could not put it down uh, I had my AirPods in because I wanted to like be with my family, but I was like, I literally have to read. So I just like had my AirPods in and was reading this book and I was like out loud exclaiming like, oh my gosh, no. The main thing in this book is that there's a war going on between the different courts. And so it's pretty political. I actually really love the politics. I think it's really interesting. If you love the characters and you like the world, you, you're going to naturally like the politics because it's like what's going on for the characters that's like really pertinent and important for the characters so this was just so good had me on the edge of my seat literally 10 out of 10 this is the first um fantasy series and book that i ever read and i'd highly recommend reading these if you've never read a fantasy and you want to get into it i know they are so long but honestly they're so worth it and you could like get the audiobook and like half listen to the audio and half read uh, i think i actually did that for maybe both of these books maybe one of them i forget um but absolutely love these. What do we do next? Okay, another series. This is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score and Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score. Absolutely love being in this world and with these characters. I cannot wait for the third book to come out. I think it's coming out later this year. Um, but these are just such good romances. Again, there's kind of like, you wouldn't even expect there to be like a mystery thrown into these books, but there's like a big mystery and it starts in this book and then ends in here or mostly ends. I think there's probably gonna be pieces that we see in the third book. But so like, just so good, so intriguing. This one is a, a grumpy sunshine with the guy being the grumpy and the girl being the sunshine. And then this is opposite of grumpy sunshine, but the girl is a grumpy and the guy is kind of a sunshine. But the guy is dealing with like some heavy things like depression and anxiety and panic attacks. So it's like the grumpy girl trying to like, actually help him out of it and kind of re-become his golden retriever self. So just both these books are just so, so good. And you should read them, especially if you want like that small town vibe where you truly feel like you're in the small town because you like know all the characters, you know the names of the streets and, and the shops. And so just super, 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 super good. Can't wait for the third book. Finally, finally, finally read Beach Read uh, a few weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. This was actually the first book I ever underlined stuff in because it was just such good writing, such like kind of funny, witty writing. Basically like two different authors, go to two beach houses neck or lake houses actually um, next to each other and then they like start writing each other's genres and then it's like their journey with that uh, the thing about this book that I am really mad about myself that I waited so long to read it I was so convinced that I had to read this on the beach and in summer because it literally says beach read and they're like laying on towels first of all not once did they ever lay on towels in this book Second of all, it doesn't take place on a beach. It takes place on a lake. Third of all, they never even really go to the lake that much. And I personally thought like the lake vibes and the summer vibes were not there at all. It would like rain a lot. I think it's it's back east. I think Michigan is where it takes place. And it kind of like rains a lot and it is like stormy. So it's like, this was not beachy at all. But I loved the book so much that I didn't dock any stars from it. But like, this is so misleading. This is, these are not the vibes. You can read this any time of the year if you're like me and kind of like to match the book to when you're reading it you for sure don't need to read this in the summer i almost would recommend not reading it in the summer because it kind of disappointed me because i wanted summer vibes and these did not really give me summer vibes at all so really good book but you don't need to read it in the summer <laughs> okay we have three books left i'm gonna go with yet again another series i'm in love i am quite literally in love this is The Serpent in the Wings of the Night. This is actually a duology. It's called The Crown of Nixia Novels. And the second one I have coming in the mail, but the second one is also a five-star read. I'll put the cover here. This is a fantasy and it has vampires in it. It was actually my first ever like vampire fantasy that I read. So the main premise of this book is that Araya, who is the main character, is competing in this kind of like Hunger Games vibe where all the participants, there's only one winner and you win by like basically killing everyone else. But Araya is a human and everyone else in this competition are vampires. And so she has to kind of navigate that world. And then while Araya is in this like competition, uh, enter Rain, who, Rain might be my absolute favorite book boy 
character literally ever to exist. Rain asks Araya if they want to go into an alliance together and so Ar Araya obviously is kind of skeptical because she's like why would anyone be in an alliance with me? I'm literally a human and you guys are you are a vampire and so it's their journey to kind of go through this um, competition together and Araya starts finding things out about herself that she's never she never was realized and she kind of was like lied to about and so oh it just is so good and the second one's amazing too. And I just would love to reread these right now. I love it so much. The next book I actually listened to, but I like to pick up the physical book of books that I listen to that I absolutely love. They're like a four or five star read. So this is The Roughest Draft. And I actually decided to read this because this is one of Haley Pham's favorite books. Um, this is a really neat book. It's about two authors that were once co-writers and they had a big falling out and then they have are forced to go back and write the third book that's in their contract. And so then it's their journey to like kind of rekindle and figure out what happened in their falling out. And we as readers don't know what happened in their falling out. So it's kind of like you're, you're waiting to uncover that. I usually get a little turned off by books being about authors because it just feels like a world that like, although I love reading and I love being in that world, I just feel like I'm not in the world of like, literature or writing or this was so well done and actually the um, author of this book it's like a married couple that co-writes this book which they thought was like a neat twist because they're co-writing about co-writers um, so this was just so well done really summery and fun last but not least this like might be like a six star read for me because it just holds such a special place in my heart it is Mary Jane by Jessica Anna Blau and I actually listened to this and again picked up the physical copy because of how much I loved it. This is a literary fiction book. I was really craving like something that wasn't a romance or fantasy because as you can see I read a lot of romances and fantasies and so this is a coming of age novel about Mary Jane who lives in a very proper and by the books household. Her mom's super strict um, and it takes place in the 1970s and then she goes and nannies for this family and then the family is like just super crazy. Their house is just a mess. The mom doesn't cook and Mary Jane's like what? Like a mother is supposed to keep the household all perfect and it's like these two different worlds colliding and so it's Mary Jane kind of realizing that the world is not all like how her mom lives and how her household is run and in these two actually famous people come live with the family that she's nannying for so then there's like some famous tropes in there and Mary Jane is like learning about music and all this fun stuff that's going on like in the 1970s and oh it's just so good it's so so good I want to read this so I can read it physically instead of listening to it but it was such a good book to listen to too the um, voice actors did such a good job those are all my five star reads since I started reading back in 2020 I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe got some new book recommendations to try out I learned while I was filming this video that it's kind of hard to talk about books that you haven't read in a while but again I hope you enjoyed if you have any video ideas or things you want to see from me definitely leave them down below and I hope to see you in my next video bye guys